Hi, I'm Joanne Flynn. I'm a professor at the University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine. Hi, I'm Denise Kirshner, a professor at the University of Michigan School of Medicine. And um, we're here today to talk to you about uh, the amazing collaboration that uh, Joanne Flynn and I have had over the past 10 years uh, or more together. Um, we're really excited about that collaboration and we think that it's really revolutionized the way we think about science. So we work on tuberculosis. Um, when I first met Denise, it was actually 14 years ago, Denise. Yes. Um, and we can date this by the birth of her daughter. That's true. And so we both had young children, and we met because I was working on experimental models of tuberculosis, immunology of tuberculosis. And I was working on um, computational models of tuberculosis and really looking for a collaborator who understood the kinds of data that we needed to really help um, parameterize the models. Right, and I was looking for a modeler to take all of the data that we had in our models and put them together in a framework that gave us some ability to understand it. So we met, and we hit it off, because we both talk immediately, a lot. Mm -hmm. and we love food. <laughs> yeah, we love. It's food. a major part of our right. collaboration, and we have been working together ever since. Um, we have our first paper was, was in Journal of Immunology, which is very appropriate because that's the journal for the AAI, and that was in 2004. And since then, we've had multiple papers. Probably we've been continuously around 50. funded. Yeah, and the best thing about it for me is that I was forced to write code, or at least read code with Denise, and Denise is forced to understand what it's like to do in vivo studies. And now our entire labs collaborate together. We have counterparts in each lab. That's right, and so, so for example, this week my whole lab came from University of Michigan since it's the meetings here in Pittsburgh. And, um, and so post-meeting, um, we are gonna have a, a, a joint lab meeting between the two groups, which we try to do about twice a year to get all the people um, in Joanne's lab and all the people in my group together, and they can really communicate about science and really the, the details. And of course, in person is the best way to make that happen. So the most difficult thing about working with modelers is when you're working with somebody who talks about math but doesn't talk about biology. And I'm sure the same thing is true for people who are computational people who they have to deal with people who don't understand math. Say, I don't understand math. And that's crazy, right? Because it's all science. It is. And so we have learned to work together to make um, a model of the pathological structure of TB, which is called the granuloma. And we put all these rules in that come from in vivo. Denise does studies and says, why don't you guys look at this? We do studies say, why don't we put this in the model? And it's been an exceptionally productive collaboration. So what we want to say is, don't be afraid of math and yeah. don't be afraid of biology. <laughs> yeah, and, and that the synergy between the two actually pushes science to places where you really can't go without it. And, and we really think that that's the future, um, the systems biology approach where you're applying lots of different um, techniques, experimental and computer, together with computational methods to make that happen and the key is communication and Joanne and I have learned to really speak each other's languages which is really the barrier that tends to be present in um, in science today between collaborators and in fact when Joanne and I bring in collaborators um, to join us it, we have to train them actually to sort of speak our language because we're already in the groove and it takes a while um, to sort of come to our foreign country and, and learn to but it's to, very to doable communicate. it's very and doable. especially if you do it over food and wine yes exactly <laughs> so when you do systems biology, and when you're a biologist and you're working with a computational biologist, the, one of the most important things is it forces you to challenge every assumption that you make. And this is really important because the math people say, well, why do you think that's true? And you can't just say, oh, I just think it's true. You have to say, well, what's the evidence? And so it really forces you to examine every aspect of what you say and really have a strong background in understanding the immunology, the microbiology, and then how the modeling actually works. And I think that that challenging of assumptions is absolutely key. And, and that comes from the fact that um, when you want to actually describe the system using equations or using computer rules, you have to you have to write them down. And so when I first got into modeling, I was my PhD is in mathematics, and I but was more interested in the biology than I was in the math, um, only really as a tool to really study the biology. The point was is that um, I would go to someone and say, so how long does a T cell live? Because I have T cells in my model, and they have to die. And people would say, well, we don't really know. It kind of depends. What kind of a T cell? What's the situation? And, and I was really shocked because math, of course, everything is really concrete. I mean, you can pick up a textbook from the 1800s in mathematics, and it's still completely usable and perfect today, where if you pick up a biology book from two years ago, you can just throw it away because everything that we know has changed within the past two years. So 
really breaking this barrier of trying to understand that things are not as concrete as they are in the math world, but fluid, and we, but we really need to try to iron out some one of those details, what those details are, really is, um, has been a challenge for us as mathematicians, but also really a challenge for the wet lab people too. But I think, again, it's pushed the science to a greater level because we really hold each other to that. Yeah. The most important thing about immunology is actually making a difference in the world in your particular area. And I think um, people will say, um, you know, how can models change the way you think? If you already know what you put in, you'll get out what you get out. It's true with any model, right? So that I don't think that computational models are different. I think the synergy between math and biology can really make a difference in terms of new drugs, new vaccines, understanding how it works. The most important thing about immunology for me, and the reason I do it, is to make a difference in the world. And in tuberculosis, it's obviously a big problem, so I think we are making headway. That's right, and, and human health is clearly one of the main um, foci of the government, of the culture that we live in. Everyone wants to live to a healthy 100, and, and, and really it starts at the level of the immune response. And I think using the systems biology approach where we integrate both things, we really have an opportunity to sort of in a multifaceted way try to target the topic of immunology um, in, within each host and try to actually do personalized medicine, which is really what we have the ability to possibly do today.